I have been an iPhone user for as long as they've sold iPhones. And for all intents and purposes, I am an Apple fanboy. But this isn't my first rodeo. And like many, I've been getting pretty bored of the iPhone. And particularly this year, we've got the same design, the same features, they're slow to adopt new technology. And of course, that word, the ecosystem. Hello darkness, my old friend. The S23 Ultra has been a bit of a love-hate relationship with me for the last couple of weeks or so. So if you are considering a switch from iPhone to Android, this video should cover off everything you need to be aware of when switching. And for those of you in the comments that says, oh, he's another Apple sheep, he's never gonna switch. Well, actually, I have switched. So let me just explain what's going on here. For me, we've got three main things that made me snap up one of these as soon as it was announced. Android, Snapdragon, and the cameras. This phone is running Samsung's flavor of Android, which will of course be the biggest change to those of you who are abandoning the iPhone and picking this phone up instead. Now, I will honestly say it has taken me a very long time to really get my head around Android, but recently I feel like it's just clicked with me. Now, since reviewing the Pixel 7 Pro and the Samsung Fold 4, those phones have absolutely blown me away this year. Like, Firstly, there is a bit of work involved in making the Switch. You can transfer over a lot of your data, but there are a couple of caveats. Now, iMessage, of course, because that obviously just doesn't work on Android, but if you do want to continue using iMessage, then there are actually services out there that do bring iMessage over to Android. Now, I've been using a service for probably over a year now, I think, called Beeper, and that's a way for me to centralize all of the messages from various social media platforms in one place. And for the rare few people who do still send iMessages to me, I can send iMessages on that as well. But that aside, if you have a partner who still uses an iPhone, then I haven't yet found a good calendar app that lets me see Apple calendars. Like perhaps if you do know of any, then let me know down in the comments so I can go and check those out as well. And whilst you are there, these videos do take a ton of time to plan and make, and I buy these phones with my own money as well. So if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel will make a huge difference to me. And it's totally free for you to do as well. We do use our Apple family calendar a lot, but instead you can just set up your partner with a free Gmail accounts, add that to their phone, and then just get them to use that calendar instead. Another caveat is if you do tend to store your photos in iCloud rather than on your device, then you'll also have to go through privacy.apple.com to request your data, which you can then transfer over. So just be aware there's some extra work to do there if you store them in iCloud. So with all of the flagship features we have on the S23 Ultra over on the iPhone, the only real new stuff we've had has been Dynamic Island, which does have its use cases, but that's kind of been it for me this year. It's another reason why I'm seeing a lot of iPhone users considering a switch over from iPhone to Android. And since we're here, ecosystem. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Now, since I choose to use a Mac over Windows, of course, the ecosystem from an iPhone is going to be better, like seamless copy and paste, unlock my Mac with my watch. It is all great stuff. But if you are a Windows user, then the S23 Ultra does have some similar tricks up its sleeve. You can connect your S23 Ultra to your Windows machine and you'll be able to send messages, view photos, make and receive phone calls, and see notifications from your PC. Like, all great features if you're on a Windows machine, but as a Mac user, the best you can get is to either use some third-party apps that mimic things like AirDrop, although a load of the ones I tried to use seem to be full of ads. But what you can do is use Google Chrome to send calls to your phone, which is probably one of the most common ways I actually use my iPhone to copy and paste phone numbers from my desktop screen to my iPhone. But outside of this, there's not actually much to complain about. FaceTime, well, most recent video calls I've had have been over WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, so that's not a big issue for me. iMessage, I thought would be another problem for me, but only a small number of conversations were still using iMessage, and most of those were pretty easy to move over to WhatsApp anyway. Photos, photos changes to Google Photos, which works just as well in my experience. Like speaking of which, the S23 Ultra has a feature called Secure Folder, which if you store any confidential or private data, can be great to use with everything you know stored on your device, encrypted with Samsung Knox, and needs unlocking with a separately set passcode, screen code, pin code, fingerprint thing. There's tons of options on there as well. Now that's something I haven't seen done before on the iPhone. Now, as far as the design goes, yes, the S23 Ultra isn't that different. I mean, it's basically identical to the S22 Ultra. And it's the same argument, I guess you could say, with the iPhone. It's the same design year in, year out. The only changes I've noticed this year on the S23 Ultra are that the edges are much flatter on the sides than the S22 Ultra, which to me makes it more comfortable to hold. But that is pretty much the only difference there is. I also think that both this year's and last year's phones are still being hampered with the whole kind of side effects of COVID on the supply chain. And so they're having to basically work with what they've got now. But for those of us coming over from an iPhone, 
it is a much, much needed change. Like in place of Dynamic Island, we have a pinhole camera, which is way less intrusive and makes the screen looks just so much nicer and bigger overall. But you do of course lose Face ID and Samsung's Face Unlock is only a single camera, so it's not as secure as using Face ID. So I just use my fingerprint to unlock, which is actually really quick. I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. And I just love the colors, particularly this online exclusive reddy, orangey, pinky kind of color. It really, really makes the phone pop. But at the same time, I have found it to be quite slippery in the hand. So I've actually ended up just slapping on a couple of cases. Saying that, adding a case then mostly hides that beautiful color. So I'm kind of torn. What do you think? Do I go naked or protection first? The S23 Ultra also comes with the love it or hate it S Pen, which will be totally down to personal opinion as to whether you use it or whether you don't, and it just stays in the phone most of the time. Now you can use it to take notes, but you can also use it to pretend you're a wizard and control your phone by swishing it around in the air to change cameras. And probably actually the most useful function I've been using it for has just been to snap photos. For me though, it has been something that stays in the phone for literally 99% of the time and won't really get used, but to others, it will be hugely useful and valuable to you. The always on display works really quite well too. There's no issues with it draining the battery like on the iPhone. And whilst it doesn't give you as much information as my iPhone, you can still you know, completely customize it and still tell what's waiting for you on the phone. But since the iPhone just drains the battery so quickly, I just end up switching it off on the iPhone anyway, which kind of defeats the purpose of one of their, you know, flagship features from the iPhone 14. And we are just coming up now to the two week mark of me owning this phone. Now I always give it two weeks to let the battery optimization stuff kind of kick in. And I have to say that the battery life on this phone has been pretty incredible, better than the iPhone 14 Pro Max that I'm using. So I'm easily getting four to five hours plus of screen on time and like, 30% battery life left. So for me getting through from around 7 a.m. through to 1 a.m. and still having 30% battery life left, it's pretty incredible. Like it rivals the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Maybe I should actually just do a proper battery comparison between the two. Maybe comment down below if you want to see that and I'll post it on the channel. Oh, and of course, for design as well, we have USB-C. So no more carrying around that one cable anymore just for one device that refuses to get with the times, although they're probably gonna be forced to do that this year. Now in terms of actually switching from iPhone over to Android and the S23 Ultra, there are a few ways that you can switch. Now you can actually transfer over most of the data from your iPhone directly to the S23 Ultra. But since most of what I did was kind of in the cloud anyway, I just always choose to start with a fresh phone. So just, you know, setting up from scratch. I just, I dread to think how many apps I've installed on my iPhone over the, the decade or whatever it is that I've owned one. So I just rather start fresh. Now one issue you might have when moving is if you use Safari and Keychain to store all your passwords, because of course you don't have that on Android. So what I would highly, highly recommend you do before you switch is to sign up for a proper password manager and install that on your iPhone. Because using a proper password manager, that's a mouthful to say, um, using a proper password manager for me has meant that I can bring all of my like usernames and passwords with me to any new device, whether it's Android, Windows, Mac, Linux, like anything. It doesn't matter if it's a Samsung Android or a Google Pixel Android, an iPhone, Windows or Mac, it works. And I can also bring with me bank and credit card information, personal ID, two-factor authentication codes, and just a whole ton more, way more than just a basic kind of built-in browser as a base password manager can do. Now I have used 1Password for literally years now and they've become a long-term sponsor of this channel. So there'll be a link down below to get 25% off either a personal or a family subscription. Now let's talk about cameras now because that's what we're all here for. And I don't mean let's snap a ton of identical looking photos and play spot the difference because if you really want to do that, well, just pause this video and let the world know your thoughts on these shots down below in the comments. Now we've all seen way too many camera comparisons to know that between the S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, they are both hugely capable cameras. Like portraits, landscapes, low light, including this pretty incredible recording of when I took a photo last night in absolute pitch black darkness in my living room. Where in the hell did it pull all of that light and color from? That is incredible. Video has also had a massive upgrade this year on the S23 Ultra. And for once, I actually think the S23 Ultra can compete with an iPhone in terms of video quality. So we do have four cameras on the back of this phone, but the things we're all here for are the 200 megapixel wide angle, the 10 times optical zoom, and that 100 times crazy long space zoom. Now, firstly, if you want a photo of the moon for some reason, that's this phone's party trick. You can just pull out your phone and with your hands, hold it up to the moon and it uses all of its kind of computational power and stability and things to expose and get some actual detail of the moon. But kind of like most party tricks, you only really do it to show your mates before going back to like not using that feature 99% of the time. 
The 10 times optical zoom though, is something that is far more capable to me than an iPhone. So for anyone with a family trying to snap a photo when you're you know, sitting on the sidelines or watching from a distance, the 10 times zoom has come in hugely useful. And it is an easy win for anyone who goes to watch their kids play you know, any form of sport, or if you go to a show or a gig and want to just zoom up close to you know, what's on stage. The 100 times zoom is kind of cool, but honestly gets a bit too pixelated to get any form of you know, good photos but it is pretty mind blowing to be able to see things that you know with the camera that your eyes literally can't see with just a tiny camera built into a phone. And at around 20 times zoom, the phone software kicks in to give you as much stability as possible when kind of shooting photos with that distance to obviously shaky hands and everything. That does a really, really good job. The 200 megapixels, also definitely one of those numbers that you just hear and go, wow, that's, that's crazy. And it's nice to know that I'm capturing things in the highest detail as possible. But just be aware that the 200 megapixel mode suffers from some pretty significant shutter lag when you tap the button. Now you can kind of fix this by downloading an app from Good Luck, which then changes the camera to, I think it's performance mode instead of quality mode, which I haven't tried, but I'll link down below to some instructions on how to do that. So unless you can be sure that, you know, whatever you're shooting is staying still, then it's probably best to use another mode or risk it, you know, either a blurry shot or just missing the shot completely. I also like all the various modes that you have available. It just makes using the camera on the S23 Ultra just, just fun again. So for performance, I've seen some really stupid videos doing the rounds comparing the iPhone 14, to the S23 Ultra in like super slow motion to show the like the, the milliseconds difference between performance of opening apps on these phones. But in real world, I was very excited honestly this year to get my hands on the S23 Ultra because we finally, like finally get the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Now this won't mean much to those of you who are in the US, but for years, Samsung has been shipping phones outside of the US with a different chip, the Exynos chip, which was, pretty awful. And basically the main reason why a lot of people said the S22 Ultra was a crap phone. But when the Snapdragon chip was, you know, we knew it was far superior. Now this is the first time I've had the flagship phone with its flagship chip, and it has not disappointed me at all. It is rapid. I've not had a single slowdown or hiccup or just any form of performance issue with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. For the gamers there, I don't do a huge amount of gaming on my phone, but for the games I do play, the performance again has been absolutely spot on. So that the phone hasn't even warmed up. So to summarize the performance. <laughs> And as far as pricing goes, this year I was able to trade in my S22 Ultra, which I need to post back tomorrow, and knock off £600. Plus they gave me a free upgrade from the 256 to the 512 model, which was quite a nice bonus. Plus when buying a Samsung phone, you also get discounts on earbuds and watches and chargers, something you don't ever see Apple do, like, ever. So whilst the price point isn't that far between, you know, the S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14, it is nice to at least see there are some savings to be had still. Okay, so for the eagle-eyed people out there who are probably already posted in the comments, oh, this guy is reviewing an S23 Ultra, but he's wearing an Apple Watch. Just pause, calm down, let me explain. Now I did use the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, and it's actually pretty stunningly good for the price. Like I picked one up for around £329 after trading in an old watch, and for the price, it is pretty impressive. A battery life that rivals the Apple Watch Ultra at like half the price, more than half the price, and an interface that is pretty good, I will call it. I would still argue that the Apple has just nailed their interface better than any Android watches I've tried so far. They're just, they're faster, they're smoother. But just before making this video, I made a, another video where I managed to break all of my watches and I'm still waiting for a replacement Galaxy Watch to come through. But at least with the S23 Ultra and like Android in general, you just open up way more options in terms of the colors and the stylings and the straps and all sorts. So whether that's a tick watch, a, a Galaxy Watch 5, a fossil watch, the Pixel Watch, there are just a ton of options that you can choose from. So up until now, it's been pretty much all good things. But over the last few weeks, I have had some issues that I would just want to touch on, which may or may not affect you depending on your use case. Now, firstly, a pretty major issue that I had, Samsung Pay doesn't support my main credit card that I use for everything. I even tried Google Pay and that didn't work. Samsung Pay tells me to use a third party app called Curve instead, which I tried to do, but I do already use Curve. And recently they limited their free tier, so I can't actually add any additional cards to that, which has kind of left me pretty stuck. Like I've never had an issue with Apple Pay. I've been using the card for years without issue. And also after I installed Curve, 
It started then sending me ads to sign up for mobile phone insurance. A couple of minor things too. If you have small hands, you might struggle to reach the left side of the screen to kind of swipe back at times. So if you're, you know, carrying shopping or holding a kid's hand or something, it can be quite difficult to reach. And certainly at that stage, I'd be putting on a case because it is a very, very slippery bugger. And then something I didn't realize I used like all the time on the iPhone is where you put your finger on the space bar, which then turns your thumb into a mouse pointer, which you can then move anywhere. That kind of works on the S23 Ultra, but it only lets you go back and forward, not like up and down and certainly not as free as a proper mouse. Now you could try changing the keyboard you use to find one that maybe does have that feature, but I do like using Gboard for my keyboard, so I've just kind of kept it as it is. But honestly, these past few weeks and months, I've been switching back and forth between the Pixel 7 Pro, the Fold 4, and now the S23 Ultra, and I am switching. I just can't decide which one is gonna be my like my main phone because they're all great in their own way. But let me know, which, which one would you choose and why? But for now, I actually am gonna stick with the S23 Ultra. Until next time.